Well, it's been a busy month for South Carolina football with recruiting, but men's basketball is also staying busy. And joining us today to break it all down and get us caught up is Colin Taylor. And Colin, South Carolina, we knew going into the offseason that they were going to go after the transfer portal hard. And so far, they've done just that. Yeah, I think the um, I think the term that was used was swan dive at one point to me when talking about it. And yeah, they've cast a wide net. They have three commitments currently. Their class as of this morning on Thursday, April 19th, or Wednesday, sorry, April 19th, was ninth best in the country with three commitments, uh, Minnesota's Talon Cooper, the Citadel, Stephen Clark, and then Miles Studi from Vanderbilt. Um, so they've, they're not done by any stretch of any imagination in the portal, and now uh, they are, they've already put together a pretty good class so far. And now is the next step and kind of finishing out this roster before things really kind of get going with team building and workouts in May and over the summer. Well, let's work backwards. And backwards, I mean the most recent commit for the Gamecocks, and that's forward Miles Studi from Vanderbilt, a guy that has proven in the past he can shoot behind the arc, but he also can bring some help to the glass as well. Yeah, uh, he was top 25 in the SEC last year in defensive rebounding rate, which is really good. He is an above average three point shooter this year, but from, you know, last season, he was 42, 43% from three. So um, his sophomore year was his best year on campus from a efficiency and production standpoint. And his numbers dipped a little bit this year, but he was still the very effective offensive piece. Very good from a rebounding perspective, especially on the wing and you hope if you're South Carolina, you get some um, an, more athleticism. They think that that's in there for him. And uh, you have a chance to bring on somebody that spaces the floor and gives you some versatility, both offensively in terms of getting to the rim outside of the shooting perspective and defensively switching on to other players, guarding a few different positions as you uh, go ahead and start looking and projecting ahead to what the season might be for you. And I know that there's going to be some players at South Carolina – are going to win when it comes to the portal. There's going to be some players that they don't win on. But what does it say, though, that USC was able to beat out Ole Miss and Arkansas, two schools in particular, at the very end that showed interest in Studi? Yeah, I think it's a testament to the staff and their ability to sell Studi on what his role was going to be in this roster, what his role looked like in terms of the system and the fit in it. And the ability to give him a role that he wanted from a minutes perspective, from um, a volume perspective. And if you're South Carolina, you like that. And they, South Carolina's roster last season wasn't, relatively speaking, one of the better ones in the SEC. But they took Vanderbilt, who Studi played for last year. They played him twice, and it was competitive at times in the second game. They took him to overtime in the first. And um, Studi mentioned to the staff what he liked about the, the fight, the effort that he saw from that South Carolina team playing him twice. So it says a lot that they were able to go out and he was one guy that they targeted somewhat early in the portal. Um, they looked at him and um, it says a lot that they can go out and move and land him quickly. It's not like this lingered for four or five weeks, um, even though that's how long he was in the portal. They got him on campus and he committed on the visit. So uh, says a lot about South Carolina when they were able to go get one guy that you know they really wanted to go look at in terms of bringing on the – they identified him early, they recruited him, and they landed him. And I think that's the, from an efficiency standpoint, that's what you want if you're South Carolina. Average just shy of eight and a half points during his career with the Commodores. The last two seasons, we've seen him improve when it came to being a scorer. You've mentioned the role. And I know it's still early right now because we got to see how everything kind of plays out with the portal and what South Carolina is able to get, of course, from a high school standpoint. But right now, as we look at it today, Wednesday, April 19th, what do you see his role being with the Gamecocks? I think I would be shocked if he's not starting at your small forward spot, the three uh, next season and playing starter minutes there first and foremost. And they're going to use him in a lot of different ways. Obviously, as a shooter, uh, he's got that capability to be a really knockdown shooter, especially from three. Has the ability defensively to, like I said, guard a few different positions and um, and get to the rack and help them from a wing perspective in a couple different sets. And uh, his numbers across the board dipped as a junior, 
But South Carolina is hoping that they can tap back into what made him really, really effective his sophomore season for Vanderbilt, um, especially from an efficiency standpoint. And um, I'm looking at his numbers now when you're talking about um, – I just had it in the story and I lost it. Yeah. Um, so Vanderbilt allowed 101.7 points per 100 possessions when he was on the floor this season, uh, which was not very good. I think that was – either last or next to last among regular contributors, but they did average 108.9, which Mm -hmm. was third best on the team, which is really, really good. Um, Those numbers, if you put, if everything being equal and you took those numbers and you put them on South Carolina's team from last season, he would be their best offensive player by a very wide margin. And he would be the fourth best defensive player. So you're bringing in someone that can make an instant impact has played SEC basketball before started a ton of games and, um, you're going to use him a lot next season. You mentioned starting a lot of games, started 56 of his 70 games played at Vanderbilt. And as you wrote in his commitment breakdown on Gamecock Central, you wrote, quote, he fits the bill of what Paris and his staff are looking for through the portal, which is experience and skill with the ability to shoot the ball. That experience, when you look at the makeup of this team, how valuable will that be for this year's team? And he also has which should be, noted because of that COVID year because we're getting towards the end of it yes but yet he is one of the players that still has two years of eligibility remaining yeah he's someone that gives South Carolina what they need they didn't have a lot of experience last year especially in the SEC and you look at the guys that are coming back from last year's from last year's team Josh Gray was asked to play a bigger role as a starter especially late um Jacoby Wright was a rotational piece as a freshman and was being asked especially down the stretch to start games and be a play a a really heavy role and um chico carter when healthy was doing the same thing even though he didn't play a ton um the year before lamont paris got there so you you bring somebody in that started a ton that's averaged a ton of minutes played a ton not only college basketball but in the league he understands what he's facing night in and night out from an athleticism standpoint he's gone against a lot of these coaches already and Um, if you're South Carolina, you hope that that's invaluable, that he can help teach and help kind of direct guys through the process of uh, this season. And, you know, when you're looking at some of the key contributors last year who were new, Michi Johnson had never played consistent minutes of high major basketball. Hayden Brown was in his first, he played a ton, but first year really of high major basketball. Um, Same with Benjamin Bozeman's Redonk. And then you have a trio of freshmen in Gigi Jackson, Daniel Hankins, Sanford, and uh, Zach Davis, who just – they were freshmen. So you hope, if you're South Carolina, that bringing veteran pieces like that in helps. And, you know, I'm looking at their numbers. South Carolina last year ranked 269th in the, in the country in three-point percentage. Mm-hmm. Um, 335th – 300 yeah, 335th in free throw percentage. Um and Studi gives you a little bit more of that, and thirty or three hundred twenty second in defensive rebound rate. So you hope if you're South Carolina, you feel pretty good about your chances um, of come him coming in and, and helping improve this roster. Looking ahead to, to 23-24. you mentioned Hayden Brown, and of course he won't be back with South Carolina next year since he's out of eligibility. But one of his former teammates is now Wallace. Flawless transition there, Mikey. Well, you know, we, 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 we've been trying to set it up there. Yeah. One of his former teammates is joining South Carolina. This is the second straight year that a Citadel Bulldog will be joining Lamont Paris, and that's the six foot eight forward, Stephen Clark. What can you tell us about him? That he is a six foot eight forward, that he was <laughs> <laughs> from the Citadel play with Aiden Brown. Uh, no, he, um, a guy, South Carolina, another one that they targeted early in the process. He visited pretty early into the portal. Like once he entered, I think he came on campus within five or six days of him going in. And they were really high on his potential, his versatility. Um, Averaged over 16 points and six rebounds at the Citadel last year. Has a chance to be a pretty good player. I don't know if he's going to be playing starter minutes. That's Mm -hmm. still to be determined, obviously, based on how the rest of the portal shakes out. But um, from a block percentage standpoint, he was a really good rim protector last year. Um, you're able to use him in a lot of different roles when it comes to defense 
and versatility and being able to switch on guys and whatnot. And you'd like to see his offensive efficiency tick up, but this is a staff. Um, they did their homework on him. He was a really good rebounder last season, mm-hmm. a really good passer from the post. He passed the ball well for a guy who's six eight and not playing a ton on the perimeter. You'd like to see him shoot the ball a little bit better. Um, did shoot 53% roughly from two, but only 21.3% from three um, this past season. Um, shot 67.7% from the line, but draws a ton of fouls, commits not a ton, but still commits a, a good bit of fouls. But what South Carolina really likes about him, they evaluated him obviously in his entire body of work, but they looked a lot too at him versus high level competition. Mm-hmm. You know, because the Citadels, a lot of the teams buy games where they go and play ACC, SEC, Big 12 opponents and get a check, likely take a loss and then go home. He played well in those games uh, for his career against what Ken Palm considers tier A and tier B, tier, tier B teams. He shot 32 percent from three um, over his career, 18 games and um 54.5% from two against tier a teams, which are teams in Ken Palm's top 50. He shot 58% from two and 40% from three. So mm-hmm. they like his ability um, the role still TBD. He's going to play a lot of the four and the five, and maybe you can stretch him to the three two. but there's a, some versatility there and um, a chance for South Carolina to get a key piece if I'm projecting right now, a key piece coming off the bench as mm-hmm. a guy that can protect the rim, rebound, and give you some versatility and some shooting offensively. Yeah, and one thing that you mentioned too, and I know we've thrown out some of the numbers from last year, so if this was one of the numbers that you've already said, we'll bring it up again because I think it's important. South Carolina ranks 330th out of 363 teams last year when you were looking at their two-point percentage from shooting. So I bring that up because, as you alluded to before, when he was inside the arc, he shot 52%. So I bring that up, Colin, because having a guy like that off the bench that can hopefully continue to improve, and you'd like to be able to see him expand his shooting behind the arc a little bit, but someone that has proven that they can shoot over 50% inside of the three-point line and experience – What could that do for South Carolina's bench in comparison to what we saw from this past year? I mean, think about it. They South Carolina struggled mightily with interior offense and interior defense last season uh, in particular. They were, for as bad as they were at times rebounding, they still finished 54th in the country um, in offensive rebound rate. But their defensive rebound rate was not very good. Um, Their two-point offense – was 330th nationally. Their two-point defense was 320th. Um, They had 10.3 of their shots blocked and only blocked 7.1% of their opponent's shots. So they were not a good two-point defense, not a good shooting the two, had a lot of shots blocked and didn't block a lot of shots. So if you're you're South Carolina bringing in Stephen Clark, who has experience doing that and is long enough to do it, gives you some versatility there. I mean, South Carolina – They'd go from Josh Gray, who was their best interior defender, um, to Hayden Brown is your second best interior defender. And Hayden was 6'5", 225, and give Hayden a ton of credit for trying and playing as as hard as he did. But it's hard when you're consistently going against 6'8", 6'9", dudes at the four spot um, trying to defend them. So now you have another big to come in and potentially help defensively, help you on the offensive end as well. And if you're South Carolina, I think you like having that in your back pocket to just have and work with and see what you can get out of them. And what would you say about the familiarity coming from the SOCON? We know that Paris has a history of coaching there, coaching at Chattanooga before he came to South Carolina. How much of that played a role in being able to get Clark to come to South Carolina? Yeah, they know his game well, and Hayden Brown – who loves Lamont Paris probably put in a really good word with Stephen Clark as well as the, the recruitment went on. And yeah, there's because it's a military school, there's probably some traits from a discipline perspective, from a leadership perspective that you definitely saw with Hayden Brown. And if you're South Carolina hoping to see with Stephen Clark, 
of just getting grinding and working and kind of setting an example for some of these younger guys for some of these transfers as you try to build out this roster. So yeah, there's some familiarity. They scouted um, Stephen Clark a ton during their time at, at Chattanooga. And you hope that if you're South Carolina, like I've said, he bring comes in and kind of sets the tone from a work standpoint, from a leadership standpoint um, and discipline standpoint um, for some of these newer players coming into the program. And when you talk about discipline, you'd like to have that trait from your point guard into Loon Cooper. Look at that. Minnesota. Look at that. That is a position that I know so many South Carolina fans have wanted to see USC upgrade at. I feel like this is an upgrade. You, you instantly just throw on his highlight reel. I mean, forget the stats, which we'll get into, but you throw on his highlight reel. This is a guy that just has the ability to make his teammates around him better. And he just does a phenomenal job when it comes to passing. passing. Yeah, and Phil's probably one of the more glaring needs on this roster when you project ahead to next season. And, um, you know, they've, they asked Michi Johnson to do it last year, and he showed flashes but was inconsistent at times. And now you bring in Talon Cooper to pair with Jacoby Wright, who came on really strong at the end of the season. And you feel pretty good about that backcourt when you – lump in Amichi Johnson when you lunch it lump in any Brian Madiba we're going to call him Ebo because I still have no idea how to pronounce his name What's we'll his call name? him Ebrahim Adiba so everyone calls him Ebo we're going to call him Ebo oh okay so when you lump in Ebo who they were going to be asking to play a ton of point guard last year along with Michi Johnson you feel really good about that and, and Cooper's coming in to start I mean no holds bar. He's coming in to start. And he was top 10 in the country last year in assist rate for or assists per game for a team that did not shoot the ball well, um, which is hard to do when you're considering that, you know, Minnesota finished 253rd overall in the country and 11th in the Big Ten in effective field goal percentage. So you feel really good about his ability to create in the offense to understand where guys want the ball, where their spots are and, and get them to a position of helping them. Um, Talon was great for them. He was top 15 in the country in assist rate and top five in the big 10. He was third best in the big 10 in assist rate. So has the ability to play point guard at a high level. And that's huge because when you look um, Michi Johnson hit 73s last year. 75%, almost 76% of those came on assisted or assisted three point attempts. Mm -hmm. Miles Studi, who we've talked about, hit, if I'm, I'm scrolling through my tabs at this point, Studi hit 74 threes. 91.9% .9 of those came off assists. So when you look at that and say, Talon Cooper's a true pass first point guard. It helps get those guys cleaner looks. It helps this offense go from what it was to where it can go. Um, South Carolina was 205th in offensive adjusted offensive efficiency last year, which was not good. Um, so if you're South Carolina, you hope bringing in someone like that can kind of raise the floor of this offense and help it probably take the next step, which is, what they've needed, and um, I think it's a, a really, really good pickup for South Carolina um, for someone that doesn't commit a ton of fouls either. Um, Cooper ranked in the top 10% nationally in fouls committed per 40 minutes, and he's an incredibly capable three-point shooter as well. Um, hit almost 38%, so you do have to respect that. It's not like he's a point guard that can pass but can't shoot. Um, he can knock down threes. And um, South Carolina thinks that they can get a little bit more out of him too um, in that regard when it comes to doing a little bit more outside of just passing the ball and hitting threes in this offense. One thing that some people might overlook if they're not familiar with Cooper is the fact that he played basketball at Dorman. And mm -hmm. not only did he play at Dorman, but he played, and I know Dorman's still very good, but he played during a time period where they were winning championships left and right. He is a proven winner. He understands – this state he understands the passion of this fan base while he didn't commit to south carolina right out of high school 
What can have in a player of his caliber, especially if it turns out well, what could that do from an in-state recruiting standpoint moving forward? You hope it helps. You hope that bringing someone back home um, and showcasing some success and him having some statistical success, the team having success on the floor helps you and makes you a, an attractive position for guys with in-state ties, whether that's guys coming back home through the portal or whether that's guys coming straight out of high school to South Carolina. So um, I think it could be huge. And I think that anytime you have a chance to do good by the South coaches in state, the grassroots programs in state, um, it really helps your case if you're South Carolina moving forward. You hope. You hope if you're South Carolina. So those are the three transfers so far. What else can you tell us about where South Carolina stands with the portal? Because I'm sure they are – Looking to add some more over the next couple of weeks and months. Yeah, they got a big visitor coming in this weekend in BJ Mack, um, who will be on campus for his official visit. It's that's kind of their one of their big ones. Um, they have a couple other irons in the fires. They're not done recruiting by any stretch of any imagination. And um, but front court is probably a spot that they'd like to add another position player to, um, and then maybe another shooter here or there, but. We're getting to the point where the roster is getting scholarship wise close to full, and um, we'll see how South Carolina chooses to round it out. But what would you Mack- say that number is right now, Colin? Just since, they, since you brought that up, I don't want to forget that. No, they, they have two scholarships to use right now as we talk mm-hmm. on April 19th at 3 10 p.m. Um, they have two scholarships available at the moment. Well, pay attention to the portal because just like Gamecock football, they have had success. The men's basketball team, Lamont Paris, trying to flip things around, kind of like flipping over a nice Mickey Mouse pancake when you were a little kid as you look at that Mickey Mouse hat from Colin Taylor. He's Colin Taylor. I'm Mike Yuva. For the latest on all your Gamecock news, be sure to lock in to GamecockCentral.com and take advantage of our special just $29.99 through August 31st.